If you're working on a website design and you want to display logos to highlight clients that you work with or the brands that you sell, you may want to reduce those logos to a single color to make them visually streamlined and fit with the overall design. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through that process of converting JPEG and PNG logos to vector using image trace in Adobe Illustrator. If this tutorial is helpful to you, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Here's a tip. When you do an image search for a logo, look in the corner for the pixel dimensions and choose the largest you can find. Let's get started. Click create new, and I'm going to create a document that's 1200 pixels wide by 700 tall and make sure the color mode is RGB and I'll make three artboards, one for each logo. One more setting here. Go down below advanced options, the more settings button and change the spacing between the artboards to 200 pixels and arrange them in one row. I want multiple artboards in my final logo dimensions because it'll be easier to keep the size and spacing consistent across all the logos if you export them at the same size. Now set your workspace like mine so the control bar is visible across the top of the window. Just go to Window, Control to add it to your workspace. Now I'll go to the File menu and choose Place to add my first logo to the document. I'll choose this one here and I like to make sure Link is unchecked. That way this logo will be embedded. So I'm going to click Place and when I add this logo now, it will travel along with this file. Now I like to look in the upper left hand corner just to sort of get the identification of anything I have selected in my file. And so I can see this is an image. I've got the name of it here that it's RGB and the resolution. So there's some helpful information there. Okay. Now we're going to use image trace to convert this logo to vector. And I'm going to make a copy first, just using option or alt to drag out a copy. And that way I still have my pixel based logo if I need it later. Now with the logo selected, go to the image trace button on the control bar and right next to it is a menu. These are all the tracing presets you can use. And the default is just a plain black and white tracing. And so that's what you get when you click the image trace button. So I'm going to click this and we'll start the black and white tracing. Now Illustrator says it's going to maybe go slow, but that usually isn't the case even when I get that warning. Now I want to open the image trace settings and there's a button for that panel right here in the control bar. You can also go to the window menu if you need to get the panel from there. And I'm going to work with the settings here. So I'll turn down the advanced triangle so we can see more of the settings. And let me zoom in a little bit. And I can make adjustments here, but actually this tracing is looking really good just with the default tracing. But one setting that I definitely want to change is right here. Ignore white. When I check this, what it's going to do is make the white background not visible. If I move this up, you can see that now. So ignore white does exactly that. It doesn't trace the white areas in the logo. And that saves me from having to ungroup and go in and edit things later. Now look back up in the upper left corner and see now this object is called image tracing. So this is sort of in between the pixels and the final vector result. With this image tracing object, I can always go back to the image trace panel and make adjustments. So I actually like to save a copy of this as well. Let me zoom out and I'm going to just option or alt drag a copy up there. And so this is the copy that I'll actually expand. So I'll close the image trace panel and to complete the process here, I'll click the expand button on the top control bar. And now this logo is being converted into vector. So if I look at this in outline mode, we can see the anchor points and the paths. And I can also zoom in and just look that everything is really smooth and perfect now. And so this is a good tracing. And if you look again in the upper left corner, you'll see this is a group. So all of the letters are in one group. And if you need to go through and edit anything, you can always ungroup to access the individual letters. Okay. Let me zoom out. And now I can change the color of this logo. I'm just going to choose this gray swatch here in the middle, and then I'm going to size the logo so that it fits within this artboard here. And then I'll just use the align buttons on the top control bar to align this to the artboard. All right. One logo is done. Now here's a quick tip. 
What if you're working with a light colored logo like this? Well, I have the image trace panel open and my art selected. So let me check the preview button and that's going to start the tracing. And when you have light colors on a black and white tracing, sometimes the logo will completely disappear. And that's when you need to go to the threshold slider and just move this up. And that way Illustrator can capture more of the dark pixels and turn them to black. And then of course, if you need more white, you just bring the slider down. Okay, on to the next logo. For our next logo, I've chosen a three color logo. And if I select it, go to the image trace panel and check the preview checkbox. Now we can see we're tracing it with a black and white default tracing like we've done before. And actually this does an instantly pretty good job of converting this into a, just a one color logo but I want to do just a few more adjustments. Now it all depends on the color that you're starting out with here. So if I flash on the original, you can see the yellow is the lightest value here. And so it's really working perfectly for us. But if we have colors that are closer in value here, you might need to use the threshold slider to capture more of those or less of those, just depending on the logo that you're using for this one somewhere in the middle is working perfectly. And then if I zoom in a little bit, I can see that I'm getting these very rounded corners here. So I'm going to want to push the corner slider up a little bit. Maybe I can capture a little bit more sharp corners from this logo. And I can see that when I flash it off and on, I've got sharp corners in the original, and now I've got sharp corners in the tracing. Now I could try a little harder to get the details perfect right here, but I know this logo is going to be really small in the final image, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now I definitely want to check ignore white and that way the logo doesn't require any additional editing. And I'm just going to click the expand button. And now I have my vector logo. Next, I'll just zoom out here so we can see our logos next to each other and shrink this, maybe make that just a little bit bigger there. And I'll get that same color, just switching to the eyedropper tool. The shortcut for that is I, I can sample it from this logo over here. And then I'm going to select the logo and again, go up to the align panel and center this on the artboard. Now I have two logos done. Now for our last logo, we're going to have to zoom way in because this one is really small. So there are times of course, when you can't find what you need and you have to deal with something that's less than ideal. And in this case, we have a really small logo and it also has a lot of dimensional effects and I want this simplified. So for this, I'm going to check preview on the image trace panel and then play with the settings. I might just take the threshold up a little bit more. The higher I push the slider, the more black I get from the logo and that looks better. And then here paths just helps you to get the detail. So if I push this all the way up to hundred percent, you'll see everything gets a little bit wobbly. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's see, maybe right here would be good around 81. That looks good. Now corners, as we saw before, gives you sharper corners. But in this case, I think this logo is going to look better with a little bit more rounding. So 62, that looks good. And then finally, noise is just something you need to play with and see what it gets you. Sometimes it changes things. Sometimes it doesn't. Now I can use the I button here to sort of flash the original and the tracing result. And now I'll go down and check the ignore white box. And this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and expand it. And then I see there's a little bump right here at the top, but I can switch to my direct selection tool, grab that anchor point and just move it down. It snaps to the one next to it and I fixed it. All right. So let's go down, zoom way out. Now this is the beauty of working in illustrator because the size just isn't going to matter here. I can make this as small or as large as I need to, and it will remain crisp at whatever size I use it at. Then I'll just sample the gray from another logo. And I have a nice row of three logos. Let me just align this to the artboard. And now because I set each logo on its own artboard, these will be easy to export for use on my website 
and the exports will all be the same size. So I can keep some consistency across the logos. Now what we'll do is export all three of these as transparent PNGs. So to do this, I'm gonna go up to my file menu, choose export, and then export for screens. Now, when you first open this, you may be on the assets tab, which is a way of just dragging each individual logo in here. But I wanna work with the artboards because I purposely left this amount of spacing around each of the logos to keep them consistent. So I'm checking all three of these artboards and then you can go over here and export to a certain folder on your system. So go ahead and choose where you want to export. I've got mine set up already. And then if I go down here, the scale is 100%, 1X. And I'm going to choose for my format, instead of PNG, I'll choose PNG8. That way these will be transparent and have transparent backgrounds. And then I'll click Export Artboard. Now if I go into this folder that Illustrator's created, I can see each one of my logos here and I can rename them. But if I give you a preview, you can see these are transparent. They have transparent backgrounds and they're all in that 1200 pixel by 700 pixel format that I set up when I originally created the artboards. And that's it, our logo project is done. If this video was helpful to you, add a comment and give it a like. My name's Laura Coyle. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos on Adobe Illustrator, Illustrator on the iPad and Fresco.